everyone, it's Kathy Zilski here and welcome to another 10 minute, <laughs> can get this right this time, welcome to another 10 minute design chat for crafty people. As I said, I'm Kathy Zilski and I welcome you to this live and hopefully my neighbor, who is also at home, won't pull out his power tools and begin making things. It, it happens. Okay, uh, here's what we're going to do. Number one, I'm going to talk about balance. And I want to start out by saying this. This is a huge topic. Balance is huge. I'm going to talk about this again because I can't cover everything that I want to talk about in 10 minutes. It's just not possible. But we don't have unlimited time. I mean, just in general. Well, that's a little bleak. I just got real dark real fast. We're going to talk about a few things today and we're going to come back and talk about this again. Also, once I'm done with the basic talk, with the basic chat, I'm going to open it up for questions and comments at the end because I can pop up your question and pop it on screen and it's all going to be beautiful. So, shall we talk about balance? Okay, I'm going to take a deep breath. First things first, I need a little coffee. As if I wasn't hopped up enough. Mmm. Okay. Balance. Before I show you my visuals, I want to talk about this, this big principle of balance because balance is one of those big design principles that affects everything we create in the crafty realm, whether it's a scrapbook page or whether it's a card. When balance is off, you might not have the language for it right now, right? You might not know, but you'll look at something and you'll be like, you know how when dogs hear a high pitch sound and they just kind of turn their head? When balance is off, something doesn't feel right. And if something doesn't feel right, we're not emotionally connected to whatever it is we're looking at. And I believe when you create something, the, one of the goals is to create a connection, a visual, like dr something that draws you in and makes you feel something. And you can do that from employing the principle, balance. All right, okay, now here we go. I'm going to the table. Face camera. And now, table view. So I want to start out today with my hands. This isn't to show you, <laughs> this isn't to show you uh, manicure skills. It's really not. But I want to talk about two big areas of balance. And first, we need to go to the clock. Yeah, yeah, come on now, let's get the timer. I forgot to set the timer. <laughs> Kathy, you don't even know how 10 minutes works. Okay. We're going to go, oh, actually, I'm going to hit timer, but you know what? It's in theater mode. Hang on here. Let's take it off theater mode. There we go. We're going to go to our timer. I really, this is almost a, as if it's like a bad Apple watch. Okay, ready? Go. All right, we're on. Let's, let's just hope that stays. I want to talk about two areas of balance, and the first one is symmetry. Symmetry literally means what you have on one side you have on the other. You can split whatever it is right down the middle and whatever's taking up space over here is also taking up space over here. Same thing with top and bottom. Whatever you have on the top, it's hard to repeat these, you also have on the bottom. Symmetry simply means reflected mirror images, equal weights side to side, top and bottom. Okay. Very, very basic. Cut it in half. It repeats. Asymmetry, however, looks more like this. <laughs> Let's do that. What you have on one side, you have something different on the other side, but it's still attempting to create a sense of balance, right? It's just not the same. Okay. It's not a mirror image. But let's say, let's say our mouse was part of it and this was part of it. And maybe let's get our lip gloss in here. That could be considered asymmetry, all right? Is one better than the other? My answer to that, no, they're just different. Symmetrical balance makes the viewer feel very comforted. It's very stable. It's very predictable. Predictable is not a bad thing in design. Predictable just means it's comforting. You know what to expect. Asymmetry, oh, I can't remember what I did there. This is a little more unexpected. It feels more energized somehow. It feels more challenging, but because of that challenge, really exciting things can happen. So let's begin. I'm gonna start with scrapbook pages. And today, one of the things I wanna talk about with my layouts that I'm sharing with you, I'm gonna show you eight and a half by 11 pages predominantly because that's what I do. 
I think it would be somewhat disingenuous for me to throw up a bunch of 12 by 12 pages that I have done purely for an assignment and not from my actual scrapbooks. But if you remember something that I mentioned in the talk from last week, the principles do not require a particular space, whether it's a square, as a square, whether it's a rectangle, whether it's a little tiny space, space is space, okay? And so your principles of design apply equally. So let's talk about symmetry. Actually, I've been going through a lot of old layouts in finding stuff for this. I freaking love this one. All right, why is this symmetrical? Well, let's 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 bring up let's bring a prop in. If you if you divide this page right down the center, right? What you have on the left, you repeat on the right. Not just in terms of photo size, but also journal blocks. You see that, right? right down the middle, even Steven. One of the things I like to think about with symmetry is that term even Steven. Got it here? Gonna put it there. Got something up here? Gonna put something down there. This is really stable. You can't really poke a hole in this design. Now this is on white cardstock, right? No, nothing fancy. I do a lot of my scrapbooking on white because I just think it's crisp and beautiful. Some symmetry number one, even Steven. Let's grab another one. Before we get into cards, we're going to cover some scrapbook pages. Now here's another all white layout. Again, I'm going to get that ruler. I never knew the ruler was going to be such a great prop. If I drop that right in the middle, what you see on the left repeats on the right. It's a very stable way to design. And a lot of times when I am scrapbooking, I look for ways to create this symmetrical balance. Two here, one in the middle, top, doot, boot, done. I know, right? That's, that's, that's the noise I make when I'm designing. Let's grab another. Here's another layout that <clears throat> I really love as well. Again, lots of white cardstock here. I, I, my bias is coming through and actually you can, there, there's the bottom, it's framed out completely. Again, what you have on either side, if you cut this down the middle, it's perfectly balanced. Now here's the thing though with symmetry. There are other things happening, right? Design doesn't happen in a vacuum. On most of my pages when I do map them, they have this even margin, right? From side to side. That is also symmetrical. This space matches, this space, and that space also match. But all of these little squares are all the same size. They all reflect and repeat. And it's a beautiful symmetry soup. All right, let's grab another layout. Before I move on to a few card samples, here's another symmetrical design. And I remember when I designed this page, actually, I had two pictures. I had a before when I purchased my car, and I had the after when my daughter had an unfortunate run in with a deer. This core is very symmetrical. One here, one here, even margins repeating, right? But here's the beautiful thing about having a symmetrical core. You don't have to ignore other little things because here, little clouds at the bottom, two clouds at the top. These are not the same size. You see that, right? But they are repeating to create a visual connection from top to bottom. They are offset. They are asymmetrical because these do not mirror each other. Tabs here and here. These are not the same size. These do not exactly mirror each other, but they reflect and create a connection. So even on the core of a very symmetrical basic design, you can sprinkle in other things to introduce an element of asymmetry into a symmetrical space. But still, even Steven. I loved that card. Okay. Now let's bring in a card project. I feel like sometimes this is a little harder to demonstrate. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to come on in here. Only because with card spaces, they are a little smaller. And what I tend to do with any card design, I'm either doing a center based design or I am doing more of what is called, you know, an off, an off center design, but something like this, What's, where's, where's my prop ruler? Right here, right in the center. I don't think it gets more symmetrical than having mirrored images of puppies. But again, this feels very even, very balanced, and very stable. 
You also have that wonderful space around the edges, right? Symmetrical. I sprinkle in three gatherings of my sequins, right? That's basically an asymmetrical little sprinkling, but the core of this design, very, very stable and symmetrical. Let's get another card in here. Here's another one where we are simply repeating what we have three times, but you can see again, cut that down the middle. One side is a mirror image of the other. Again, this feels very stable, very predictable. And I, I love the term predictable because it, it gives comfort. I think there is a comfort in predictability. So with symmetrical design, we feel comforted and our eyes feel happy. All right, I'm going to zoom out and we're going to move on to... Uh, and that the thing is, I have so many pages and designs. I could just do someday a live of talking about scrapbook pages because... And, and, and even just one topic, I have so many things to share with you, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to dial it down and focus in. Here is our first asymmetrical page. And unfortunately, we are getting almost to the end of the 10 minutes. I'm going to go a little over. So I hope you're going to hang in with me. All right, here we go. So asymmetry, what you have on the right, you do not have on the left. I think that's pretty clear and easy to see, right? You've got a collage little square photos cascading down the side, but they are balanced out with a title, a little bit of journaling, and a cute little bat. Of course, we have the repeating wide margin all the way around, so that creates sort of this framing margin space that kind of is symmetrical. But these things, both of them, look at that, the little photos that bust out into that margin. I also busted out the October into the margin as well, this is a balanced page, even with things that are not mirror images. Makes sense, right? All right, let's bring in another one. These are some layouts that I absolutely love that I hadn't seen in a while. I love this one. Okay, this was actually uh, very inspired by my friend Jen Gallagher, who does a lot with layered, uh, layered banner ribbons. But again, if you take your magic ruler and you drop it in the center, what you have on one side does not repeat on the other. This is a classic asymmetrical design. But the things that you do to create connection and unity, remember when we talked about repetition, I believe that was the last one, those things are also working to make the balance work. Over here, there's open space. Top and bottom, open space. This is all lined up beautifully. The little banners here at the bottom, the journal block, the two. Oh, there's our, okay. We're done, we're gonna stop, but we're gonna keep going. Uh, see how the two lines up here and with that, okay? But again, this is not equal. And you can kind of see how maybe this is a little more exciting and interesting than, well, let's get one of my more symmetrical designs. Yeah, maybe it's a little more exciting and interesting than that page. You know, only because it's it's there's stuff going on. Again, the other stuff going on though is repetition, colors, little enamel dots, little bits of white, things like that. Mm, tie it all together. Now let's take a look at a couple card projects. We're gonna, I didn't think I was gonna talk this long, but you know, when you get me going on design, on design topics in general, oh, I, I kind of can start to riff. All right, we're gonna zoom in here. Zooming in. Now, you can see the asymmetry in this, correct? We're looking, right? We're off to the, we're, everything's shifted off to the side. This is not a cut down the middle, equal side to side. Now there are spaces that are equal. See that margin and that margin? Two margins that are equal, that's good. That creates a nice anchor for this page. But the balance is definitely askew. I like to think of asymmetry as a little off-centered. Here's another card project. Look at this little guy. I made this after, I think I watched some video Christina Warner did. I never shared this any, anywhere. I just wanted to make a watercolor heart and have this kind of, this whole effect. But you can see the shift to the side, right? The placement is to the side. And there are little elements here that repeat. Now, I guess these are sort of a mirror image, right? If you just reflect these sequins. But you can see they both have a direct connection to the heart, but everything 
is shifted off to the side. Again, this creates a little more energy and maybe a little more visual interest. Let's bring one more card project in here. Let's put it right side up. How, how about that one? Again, we've got this little gathering of stamped and embossed uh, floral, and this guy is, I think I used color pencil on this. Um, well, I should bust out the color pencils more often. But you can see the shift off to the side, this off center, right? We're going down the center, but we're not equal from side to side. That, my friends, is what asymmetry looks like in action in a card project. So, a few things here. And again, what you can get from this, and let's, let's zoom up a little, is just a little more energy, right? Just a little, it's just a little less predictable than something like that. Doesn't mean this is bad. This is great. This is a super cute little card. But the off-center opens up opportunities for a little more interest. Again, always paying attention, however, to your spaces around things. And that, my friends, that is a quick look at balance. All right, we came in a little bit further than the, than the time I had allotted. Well, oh, and I have hair sticking in my face because I, I did put lip gloss on. But I just, uh, yeah, this is diving in and just giving you a very, you know, very quick look at design topics. Balance is huge, but balance is important. But there are also other things that are always happening, right? What are your margin spaces? Are you repeating any little elements on your card project or on your scrapbook page? Eh? Now, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into comments. I can answer a few. Oh, wow, we've got more. Okay. Um, if you have a specific question here, I'm happy to take uh, questions for a few, a few minutes, but I also have some notes here that I wanted to make sure. <laughs> okay. I will be sharing this video also on my YouTube channel. It will stay on Facebook. And now I've got texts coming through that shouldn't be coming through because I, because I put it on Do Not Disturb. Well, apparently that doesn't work. Who knew? Okay. Now, as always, if you have a topic on design that you are wanting me to talk about or a specific challenge that you have, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, send me an email. Send me an email at kathy at kathyzilski.com and tell me what, what your problem is. I am actually creating a master list right now of people's questions and they have been good. Things like, um, I don't know how to combine colors. Things like, I don't understand how to use pattern papers together. Um, things like, I have a brand new stamp set and have no idea where to start. So I've got some really great questions coming through and these are things that I want to address in future 10 minute chats with 10 minute design chats for crafty people. I had to look at it off screen because I can't even remember what I call it, but feel free to contact me and let me know. I, my goal is to come back every Monday at 11 AM and pick another topic. And again, share stuff from my collection, my vast collection of crafty things with you. And we can just talk about design. So I appreciate everyone who tuned in live today, and I will see you back here. Uh, we'll see you back here again soon with another 10-minute <laughs> design chat for crafty people. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.